Today, let's see how a quick and easy impact can be done in Godot. It's a straightforward video, useful in case you are prototyping or doing a quick game jam. I'm going to show you how to layer a couple particle systems and create respective textures. I also made all of these extra impacts and hits that are available for you on my Patreon page or on my website, links below. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. And I like to begin by creating a node 3D. Can be renamed to VFX and score impact. I'm gonna push it a little bit in the Y axis up. Here we go. And with right click, we can add the child node. In this case, for a GPU particles 3D. This specific one, we are going to use several particles 3D, is for the flash. Quick bright flash. With only one particle for the amount up here on the right. From there, on the process material, which is essentially the particle system, we can create a new one. We also need to create a new pass. Basically, where is this going to be rendered? And in this case, it's going to be a quad mesh. It's essentially a square. And finally, a material. In this case, we're going to use the new standard material 3D. As you can see, it's falling down because if we click here on the particle process material, on the accelerations, by default gravity is on, we can say it's zero. Here we go, our nice little square. From here, on the material, we want to say first that this is transparent, alpha. We need to adjust a few things, like for example, the call mode, the way it is now, it's only visible from one side. So let's disable it to have this two-sided. And then on vertex color, we want to use as albedo. Essentially, this will allow us to control the color of the material via the particle system. And on albedo is where we can add a texture similar to this one, a flare, that I'm going to show you how to create very, very easily with Material Maker. A software that I enjoy very much using to create procedural texts based on nodes made with Kodo by Rodezilla. If you google it, there's plenty of materials, by the way, to learn from, and you can download it here. Once you open it up, this is what we have, and it's extremely simple, let me show you. We want to begin with a circle, with right click. If you select, you can have it previewed on this preview 2D window. Here, you can adjust the smoothness. You can say it's close to one, very close to one, and that's it. You have the flare. From here, you can do a bunch of things, let's keep it simple. But for example, you could use the tones node to control the dark and white values as you wish. Most importantly now is, we don't need the black background, so let's drag another line from here, so we can use the colorize node, and double click on the first key, so we can say the alpha is zero, which basically we are saying that the black values are transparent. And that's it, right click on the preview window, that's the cool thing, you can directly export from here, with 1024 by 1024 for the resolution as a PNG to your project. Back in Godot. Here we go, we can select the flare. Nice. Now, if you move around, you may notice that this is not facing the camera. And when it comes to particle systems, it's useful sometimes to face the camera. I want this to be seen from every angle. So down here on the material, on billboard, we want to say particle billboard. And turn on keep scale so we can modify the scale of this particle as we wish. And as you can see, if you move around, it follows the camera. Cool. Now, this is basically on loop continuously, and for an impact, we can turn on one shot, and then we can use up here the emitting to turn it on or off to play the particle system. Since it's a flash, let's decrease the lifetime to 0 0.2, something quick. We can also say the fixed FPS is 60 or more if you wish, so it's smoother. And let's control the scale down here on display, scale. It's a bright flash, something big like 6. Let us see how it looks by enabling and disabling the emitting up here. Alright, yeah. We can make sure it shrinks over time. With the scale curve, new curve texture. It's gonna go from small to big, you can select the presets and say it's linear, exactly like this. Here we go. Now let's add some color. I'm gonna use an orange. In this case, feel free to try different colors. I already have one that I've tested. On the rough section, I'm gonna say it's 3.5, then 2, and then 0 
and this is how it looks. Cool, it ain't much but it is the beginning, we are a layer, a few more particles. Let's actually say this one has even a shorter lifetime like 0 one, so it's even more impactful. So for the next particle system we can duplicate this flash, call it the flare. First thing you want to do is make sure that this process material is unique, make unique on this arrow as well as the material make unique because we are going to change the texture we don't want these changes to affect the flash particle system right let's jump back to material maker to create another very straightforward texture i'm going to begin with the circle again i'm going to fade it and connect this to a transform cool thing is that we can scale it on the y we can shrink it a lot z lot one duplicate with ctrl c or with Ctrl D, this node, connect again the, the shape and this time rotate it 90 degrees. We want to join both with a math node exactly like this and we get this cool cross. Let's just add some glow in the middle with another math node. Let's copy the first node, the shape, the circle and let's select the math node so we can preview what's going on and adjust some values on this circle right here like for example decrease its radius right and here we go we have a quick glow at the center and the cool thing is that if you set this to minus a and b you kind of get this cross hair it's crazy you can do a bunch of things with this right so let's remove the black background i'm going to copy this colorized node select the colorized node and on the preview 2d export with right click 1024 by 2024, I'm gonna call it the flare 02, export as a PNG, yes. And make sure this material is unique, that's very important. Let's open the material and in Albedo replace the texture with this new one. Here we go, looking good. Lifetime can be longer, 0 0.2, and the size can be smaller, a minimum of 4. The maximum could be 4 as well. Let's make the curve unique as well. Because on the curve we want it to hold its size at the end a while longer. If you select both, you can preview them by enabling and disabling emitting. And yeah, I noticed one thing. On the flash and on the flare, we should be fading them out. So they don't disappear out of nowhere. On display, on the color curves, we have this alpha curve. Let's create a curve. And by mistake I'm changing the scale curve. Make sure you change the alpha curve from 1 to 0. I'm gonna do the same for the flare. On the alpha curve, I'm gonna create a new curve and not on the emission curve. Sorry about that, guys. Make sure it goes from 1 to 0. I have a glow on my scene, by the way, with a world environment. That's why it's so bright, in case you are wondering. I'm gonna change the color of the flare. And now for our third element, we want a shockwave. Let's duplicate the flare, rename it, shockwave. It can live longer on the lifetime, like Z.4. Make sure the process material is unique, as well as the material on geometry, because we are going to change the texture on the albedo to this circle, that we can create once again with Material Maker. Three textures that begin with a circle. can create a math node, because we are going to duplicate this circle again, connect it to the math node, but subtract A from B. All we gotta do is, on the second circle, decrease the radius, right? And once you do it, you begin seeing this kind of shockwave, right? You can adjust its fade. I'm gonna leave it more or less with these values. And then copy the colorized node so I can remove the black background and we right click export as a PNG to my Godot project and assign it here, right? This is what we get at this point. It's very bright, we don't want this to be that strong, so on the particle process material, first I'm going to say the scale is between 3.5 and 4, 
And then on the color, I'm only going to decrease the alpha, which is transparency, to 0 0.1. And I notice now <laughs> that I was using a curve on the emission, but instead let's remove it and add it to the alpha curve, where it goes from 1 to 0. You can use the presets if you want. Here we go, looking good. It's subtle, it's enough. And if we select everything, this is what we get. Yeah, the shock wave could be bigger, between 4.5 and 5, but essentially that's it. All we are missing now is the fourth element, which is some sparks. But I'm gonna begin by duplicating the flash for this one, drag it down here, call it sparks. The first thing we can do is increase the amount to 20 particles. And the second thing is increase the lifetime. We want them to live longer like 0.5 alpha second. Make sure you turn on explosiveness, you set it to 1, so it spawns as a burst of particles instead of as a rate. Which we cannot see it right now, because this is huge. Let's make the process material unique, open it up, and let's take care of the velocity in spawn. Make sure the spread is 180, which is like everywhere, it's gonna spread everywhere. And then down here, the initial velocity between 5 and 25, that should be enough, let's see it. Yeah, they are huge, alright. Let's fix that by saying in the display, it's between 0 0.5 and 1. Alright, looking a little bit better. And now we want to stretch them, we want them to look like sparks. So, on the scale curve, let's remove this one and create a curve XYZ where the x first key is going to be below 0 0.5 or close to 0 0.5 and the last key is going to be 0 but on the y curve, on the y axis, we want to stretch this so on the max value, let's say it's 10 but let's not use all of this, something between 5 should do just fine oh yeah, and for the color 10 on the r, 3 on the g and 2 on b that should be enough, let's see, yeah, okay, oh yeah, for the scale, by the way, it's not between 0 0.5 and 1, it's between 0 0.05 and 0 0.1, okay, that's looking better, but they are not facing their velocity vector, right, they are not aligned with that vector, the way we do it is on the particles flag, turn on, align y, and yeah, it didn't change anything because on the material, let's go down here, let's make sure it's unique first so it doesn't influence the flash. On the billboard, we don't want this to face the camera continuously, so let's disable it. It's a weird process, but now since they are aligned with their velocity vector, we get these sparks, we get this basic but cool impact, right? It's a great basis, I believe, for you to begin explore. Yeah, I'm just gonna make sure the sparks are brighter. But that's essentially it. By the way, you can disable one shot and turn on emitting, so you keep on looping and you can adjust color as you wish and other parameters, by the way. Yeah, it's a useful trick, but make sure you disable one shot after that. All right. Here we go, that's it, and that's how I also made all of these impact effects. You can get them all, by the way, on my Patreon page and on my website. They are all available there. So that's it, I hope you have enjoyed. I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month. And as usual, a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are Ashkan Kalkali, Chase Kalus, David Molina, Yeg Marks, Frosty40, Gabriel OS, Grub Lab, Ivan Jacobi, Jay, Jinuga4, Leandro Drissi, Marcel Break, Matt Mohorn, Oitz, Pierre Mario, Pradip Sen, Sanofa, Static Samurai, Vulcan S, Verisuta, Whatever Marta, Will Pullion, Zal Barcade, and MJ Kim. Thank you all very much for your support. I hope to see you on the next video. Thank you all for watching, and bye.